Hey everybody out there in YouTube land, how you guys doing? Anyway, this is JD, I'm back doing another video, and uh, this time I'm going to start looking at a different opening. Um, <clears throat> namely, the uh, the King's Indian Defense, which uh, I've played the classical King's Indian for a long time, and I used to really enjoy it because I, I thought that the plans were like super straightforward. White's just going to go crazy on the queen side, black's just going to go nuts on the king side, and it's a super fun clash. But uh, I, I've since decided that I think that I want to I wanted to try to play something um, a little bit more offbeat that hopefully will sort of interfere with the uh, plans that black has. And so uh, I came upon the Makaganov system. And uh, I want to look at a few games from it. So I thought uh, if we're going to be looking at trying to restrict the F5 move from black, who better to learn from than the, the great Karpov? So let's take a look here. So after D4, F6, C4, G6, just the normal King's Indian defense stuff. This all looks very normal until the fifth move, which looks a little bit odd. Uh, I know that uh, the first time I showed this to a couple of friends of mine, they thought that this was just like the strangest, most passive looking move that there that there ever was, but it has some ideas behind it. Um, the first object is that it just stops any piece from coming to g4. So sometimes when you play knight f3, they play bishop g4 and you get sort of this annoying pin, or knight g4 can be really annoying, especially if you're trying to post this bishop on e3. So, uh, <clears throat> again, it just immediately stops anything from coming there, uh, but it has a deeper idea, which we'll see later in the game, and that's to support playing g4. And so this pawn duo, e4 and then g4, is going to restrict this f5 move. And uh, so let's get, let's get into it a little bit further. So after castles, bishop e3, immediately taking advantage of the fact that this, uh, this knight can't come in here. We get e5, d5, and, and now the probably the most common move that I face, even though maybe it isn't the most common move on the board, is uh, a5. And Black's idea is that he wants to play knight to a6 and the knight into c5 without me being able to play b4, or at least causing me to have to work for b4 a little bit. And uh, here I found a, an idea that Karpov has played several times. He just immediately plays g4, which I like this move a lot. Um, because after, say, something more natural like knight to f3, a lot of times black can play knight to h5, and you have to deal with both f5 coming and knight to f4. By going ahead and playing this move immediately, now knight h5 isn't a possibility. And so if black really wants to try to shove this f5 push, he's going to have to drop the knight back either to e8 or to d7. Or sometimes they play king g8 and then the knight back to g8. Or sorry, king h8 and the knight back to g8. But even so, uh, the knight's going to be somewhat less active on these back rink squares than he will be on f4. So after g4, g4 we get to knight to a6. Just continuing on with his plan here. And now Karpov played knight to f3. I did find several games of his where he played knight ge2. And uh, his idea is he's going to play knight g3, and uh, he's added an extra to defender to a4, and he's got another piece clamping down on this f5 square. Which I think that idea is interesting, um, but I decided to stick with the, the knight f3 idea. So after knight to f3, we get uh, knight dropping back to d7. Clearly he wants to try to play this, uh, this f5 idea. And so Karpov plays a3, which is a, a really a really nice move. It's sort of the, the normal ideas of what we see on the queen side happening. He wants to play g4 and then maybe later c5. Uh, but, you know, you're thinking, he's already got these pawn pushes over here. Where's he going to put his king? Is he just trying to... to <clears throat> excuse me. Is he just trying to, to take space all over the whole board? Well, yeah, he is. It turns out the king's actually pretty safe on e1, and uh, that king's going to set here for the rest of the game. So by playing a3, he is definitely supporting a possible b4 break, which is going to be possible because of this hanging rook here, which uh, is going to remain hanging for some time because it's going to take a little bit for this bishop to come out. So after a3, we get f5, and uh, actually turns out to be quite a poor choice here because uh, it's going to open the g file, and uh, white is going to be poised to get as much action on the king side as black could hope to, really. In fact, probably more, because if things start to get too hairy, uh, white can even castle the opposite side of the board, whereas black's already committed his king. 
So this is a much more dangerous situation for for white to be playing on the, the king side than it, or excuse me, a much more dangerous situation for black to be playing on the king side than it is normally. So Karpov captures, we get takes, takes, and he drops the knight into c5 here. His idea is he wants to try to reclaim this pawn. He doesn't want to do it with the rook because of uh, maybe possible bishop d3 or something like that. Uh, but now we get b4, which is possible now, uh, again, because of this hanging rook here. Just kicking the knight. The knight doesn't want to go back to d7. Uh, so black comes up with this idea of playing e4, which uh, is quite an attractive move because it uh, opens this bishop up. And we have this hanging knight here and uh, behind it this uh, this rook set poise. So this, this makes some sense and uh, is the only real follow-up to the this idea of playing knight to c5 because he's going to get d3 for his knight here. And so uh, Karpov responds with knight to d4, which uh, does add some additional protection here, but I think mainly the idea is he wants to stop uh, any of this pressure down the file here. So we get knight to d3, which again is sort of the only move. And uh, after bishop takes d3, we get e takes d3, and now rook to g1, just hopping on this file. Uh, it turns out that uh, go ahead and try to grab this pawn immediately it turns out to be quite a poor choice. Uh, so after captures here, uh, we might get takes here, and then if we take back, now this knight can uh, jump in and hit the queen, and we have some problems with our own unprotected rook. Uh, so after we come back here trying to defend the rook, uh, black can just trade rooks, and then he gives up his light squared, or excuse me, his dark squared bishop, um, but we can't really take it because of this check here picking up the queen. Um, so that's a pretty quick refutation of why we can't pick up the hanging pawn. But honestly, that pawn's going to be weak for quite some time, so there's no big hurry to try to grab it now. So instead of that, we get rook g1, which is already threatening some pretty nasty stuff. He has ideas of playing like bishop to h6, or maybe playing queen to g4. There might be knight to d3 at some point, which is now possible because of the pinned uh, excuse me, the pinned, the pinned, he, uh, the pinned bishop can't speak. Sorry about that. And so uh, Black actually just uh, blunders immediately here. He captures the pawn, which seems like the most natural thing, um, but it's going to allow a nice sacrifice from Karpov, drawing this king into the center, just really highlighting how uh, how this g4 idea and opening the g file can really turn the tables on Black and make him uh, be the one who ends up having to defend on the king side rather than his normal attacking. Uh, so we get to here, taking the which draws the rook up the board. And then this nice sacrifice, bishop takes g7. Uh, which is, again, the idea is he's going to follow up with queen to g4. And the king is really going to have to come further up the board to try to hold on to this rook. Otherwise, he's just going to be down a piece for, for nothing. So we get to rook takes. And now the, excuse me, not rook takes, but king takes. And now this check here. And king f6, which is the only way to try to hold on to the, hold on to the rook. But this just walks straight into mate. Um, <clears throat> after knight to e4, there are actually a lot of moves that win here. Bishop d4 wins as well. Um, notice that uh, the king can't really go anywhere that's going to continue to defend. So he's going to be forced to put the rook in the way. But after knight to e4, let's just look at that. So after this move, he's forced to play here. But now knight to e4. And uh, the king is going to have to drop back to probably f7. We'll capture, to capture here. The queen will come into e6. The knight will probably come to f6. And there's lots of threats here. And eventually it's going gonna, it's gonna to lead to a pretty devastating position. Uh, but Karpov's that move is even better. He just plays uh, knight to e4 check immediately. And again, if the king wants to try to hold on to this rook, he has to play king to e5, but this just allows um, an, an even faster mate. So <clears throat> Karpov played knight to g3, which is a good enough move to force uh, resignation. Uh, obviously, if he tries to defend the rook, um, either by protecting it with the queen or dropping it back, then just queen d4 is going to be mate. Uh, which means he's going to have to just give up this rook entirely. Even if he runs to with king h6, this is still going to be a mate pretty quick. Notice that we have one, two, three attackers. We maybe have one defender. This rook and knight look pretty silly over here on the side of the board. Um, but actually, there was a there was a faster mate. Instead of playing um, rook back to g3, he actually has this cool move of uh, knight. 
<coughs> excuse me, queen to g3, and the only move uh, is to, if he didn't pose it with the rook, of course, that's just made immediately. So he's going to capture here, and now we go back, and uh, notice the knight, which was blocking the queen from going to d4, isn't there anymore, so this would just be a quick mate. Um, quite a nice game, though. If we go back and look at the, the earlier idea, which was really this g4 move, and uh, the g4 move, I think, is most effective uh, when you look at it uh, when black really tries to play this f5 idea. So after here, we got uh, knight f3, and then we played h a3 here, and then f5. So since we have this pawn on the, on the g4, we're going to be able to open the g file up, which is going to give white a lot of play along the, along the g file. Often he will sometimes castle king si or queen side and be able to bring both rooks over. But uh, even if f5 isn't played, white can still get some pretty strong attacks on the king side. He can play something like g5 and then just run his h pawn up the board here. And he's going to get some open lines one way or the other. So this is quite a nice idea, just restricting this f5 plan or making it much more dangerous for black to employ. Anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed this video. We're going to look at some more kid, some more kid games going forward. And uh, make sure you subscribe or leave a like or a comment or any of that would be great. Okay, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.